Alrighty guys, and this here's my uh, coffee tripod that I made coffee on this morning over the fire. What I did was I found me three straight dead sticks and then uh, check this out guys. You don't have to go full Boy Scout on this and uh, lash it all up like it's going to last forever. All you got to do is take your chain, which this is my chain here and I got three S hooks on this and I'll show you why in a second. There's one S hook here on the top. Simply wrap it around once or twice, tie it off, let it hang. The circular, whether it's a piece of cordage or a piece of chain, just a circle will hold a cooking tripod. You don't have to, like I said, you don't have to go full bushcraft boy scout and weave one out. So then it's hanging from here. And then down here I got my actual hook that I'm hanging the pot from. And then I got the second S hook here so I can take it like this. I can go like that. And I can raise and lower the chain as needed. A couple of S hooks and some dog chain. So what do you think guys? You don't need a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Bring yourself a chain, a couple of S hooks, and you got yourself a cooking tripod. This is the same style tripod that I made up in the mountains when I made my chili. So, let's break this down real quick guys. Take that off like that. Run that through like that. S hook, S hook on the end, and then an adjustable S hook. The whole chain is probably five and a half foot long very handy thing and all that's needed is three poles about the same length just make sure they're dead don't be cutting live trees down guys so cooking tripod with a chain for those of you that follow the channel know I usually come out here with a little green old school coffee pot my wife got this for me a while back and I just haven't had a chance to take it out in the woods yet. It's stainless steel, has a bale handle on it, that way I can make coffee, I can boil water for food, I can boil water for purification, plus when I come out here I can put a whole bunch of food in here and it acts as a container. And uh, it did come with a strainer and a percolator top, but of course I put a stainless steel acorn nut body washer stainless steel nut on the bottom and two uh, stainless steel washers tightened it all down and now it's a boil pot because you can't make real cowboy coffee with a strainer that's cheating but yeah I'm very happy with this I don't know the brand name of it my wife got it for me and uh, I know on our gas range at the house it makes awesome coffee. Out here on the campfire, <laughs> makes coffee even more awesome. So, that being said, if you're looking for a coffee pot and you got the room to spare, something similar to this might just be the ticket for you. Alright guys, I'm fixing to cook breakfast. And I will be cooking it on my Antique Griswold number 4 cast iron skillet. And I also got a new skillet out here. I mean, it's really not new. Had it for years, never really used it. One day I went down that rabbit hole and uh, I was curious as to why some cast iron is really rough and some is really super smooth. Before I researched it, I just thought it was because some of our uh, stuff that me and my wife have is so old it's just been worn down smooth. And while that is true to an extent, my research proved that uh, there was a time when you could buy rough cast iron or smooth cast iron and in the early 90s all the cast iron companies decided to uh, fuck our customers, get it rough and like it and that's it. But you used to have the option of polishing, have it polished or have it rough. So then I found out you can polish it so this here little flat skillet never really used it. Me and my wife uh, this came in a set, and we used the big one. There's like a 10-inch skillet that we use for omelets, but this never really used. So what I did 
over the course of a few nights I sat there with sandpaper I started out with like uh, I believe it was 80 grid and I just started sanding it didn't sand it a whole lot on the back but I sanded it here sanded it down as smooth as I could get it by hand ended up using uh, I think it was 180 is what I finished it off with and I cleaned it up real good with soap and water then uh, I put it in my oven at like 500 degrees for I believe it was about an hour and then uh, I coated it with grease and then I put it back in for another hour and coated it with grease I might be wrong on that maybe I coated it with grease and then put it in the oven I'll have to verify that but um, I re-cured it by putting grease on it and baking it in the oven and it's not real pretty right now but I've used it a couple times at the house and I have a feeling that this is going to start being an everyday thing when I go out in the woods unless I'm really seriously stealth camping and just using like a military mess kit or a canteen cup but uh, I'll be cooking bacon in this and then I'm going to fry some eggs in this and I've already made my grits so let's do it 